Susie, what a remarkable feat, uh, bringing all these people together. And from my perspective, I've heard them all say great praises of you and also your organisers. What for you has been important that's come out of the, the conference? Well, the first thing I want to say is that the name of the International Herald Tribune is what brings people together. And I'm lucky enough to know a lot of these people, so I think that helps. But to me, what's so fascinating is that there's a divide between those who think of heritage, of a past, as something that you have to drag into the future and others who seem to be jumping into the future. And it's always the surprises for you. You know, I, I was amazed to see that the Ralph Lauren brand, which we think of as so patrician, is already so involved in the modern world in terms of cyberspace and going forward even more so. So I think that's what I'm taking away. So innovation, creativity, understanding the digital space. Um, interesting that I talked to a gentleman from Saudi Arabia and he felt that they, he, there was a concern that the digital space and the reality of, of actually the look and feel for the Arabs could, could almost be a disconnect. Could you ever foresee a, a problem that, of brands understanding the new technology and, and forgetting about the roots of, of, of true luxury? Of course, there's no doubt that the sense of luxury, the real luxury, you have to smell it, you have to taste it, you have to feel it. It can't be something that you just see in cyberspace. But there are other ways that you can access things that if you're in a country which has no brick and mortar store of your favorite brand, you can actually go online and buy those shoes. That has to be a plus whatever country you live in. One thing that probably divides countries is the sense of service. After all, people who are used, particularly say in the Middle East or in Asian countries, are having fantastic service all enveloping service, when they just get a, a package that's arrived from something they've clicked on online, not the same experience. Susie, you've seen a lot of changes from the early days of print and through to the new digital space. Can you tell me what amazes you today about the whole digital era? A journalist's role is to be curious and always to want to work towards the new thing. So I must say personally I have embraced everything to do with digital and I am thrilled now that I'm going to have an app so that people will be able to get straight to what I've written. I think this is all great and if you don't go into these things with an open mind it's just sad. It is the future. Susie, brands like Ralph Lauren can reach large audiences quickly and they're spending a lot of money in doing so. How are young brands going to reach these audiences and afford to be able to do so? I would say that young brands have got more chance than ever before. Instead of having to knock on doors to try and get to a buyer, you know they can put their own stuff, they can create their own website. Of course there are lots of hazards in that, but they actually have got the chance to do it. And you know, when you hear from people like um, Russian buyers in the days when they had to sit for hours at Louis Vuitton or Dior begging to be allowed to buy anything, and how that's changed, the whole world has changed now. Everything is much quicker, snappier, and that's probably good in the end. And the exciting news that we're going to be in Brazil, your next conference is going to be in Brazil uh, next year. What to you is the essence of the luxury consumer in all these BRIC countries? That acronym BRIC, B-R-I-C, was very interesting. It's really dominated the decade. And yet I've realised, having gone to three of these four countries, how different they are in their attitudes to luxury. There is Brazil that we are yet to go to, which I think represents a very young market. We're talking about 48% of women under 45. That's extraordinary demographic compared to many other countries. Russia, a whole different thing because there's such a heritage of luxury there, over-the-top luxury, which I think must be why there's a czar lingering in there in the spirit of the Russians who are rushing out to buy super luxury. India also a heritage of luxury, but also a heritage of asceticism. So I think we're thinking about different countries. And Brazil certainly represents a very vibrant economy, vibrant people, a lot of young people, a lot of sunshine, and that certainly impacts on the whole character of the nation. And talking of sunshine, the luxury industry has been through, through its dips and troughs, but are we, are we now looking forward to a brighter future? I was fascinated to see those figures that the luxury brands had not fallen in the economic downturn. Yes, they hadn't risen so far in terms of sales, but they hadn't crashed downwards. It was the lower brands and the cheaper brands that had suffered more, which rather proves that what we know, that the rich are always with us. It's very true. Um, and, um, and the eccentric too. I mean, Jeremy Hackett was telling us that 
the British eccentricity is there and that's what he loves the best and we've got the Olympics coming out. What would you like to see coming out of Britain in the next couple of years? I love it that Jeremy Hackett invented a heritage. He almost made a joke of it by making clothes that look as though he took them from what his grandfather wore in his childhood. But of course he invented the whole thing in the 1980s, the era of Madonna and Boy George. It just goes to prove that heritage is something you can grab your bit of it. You don't have to have it yourself. And I think that's what the UK should do much more. Lots of very inventive young designers. They should be the people who are encouraged to take up elements of heritage and history, but use them for now. And Susie, finally, I'm going to spring this on you because I've sprung it on everybody else. Luxury confessions. Will you give me your own personal luxury confession? My greatest luxury is silence. Although I love music and listening to my own music, I spend so much of my life listening to other people's music, whether it's in fashion shows, when it might be great or not, or whether it is this ambient music that you just get everywhere now. I love the silence, and I love going down to my house in France, in the country. Of course, it isn't really silence. There are many sounds of animals and birds and all sorts of things, but it's the silence of nature, not the silence of music turned off.